Okay, what is a function? Well, this is a hugely important concept in mathematics, functions. So if you're studying functions and you're super confused, then this uh, video hopefully is gonna really clear up the concept of what a function is and is not. And uh, if you're new to functions, then you definitely wanna be paying attention to this as an introduction to the concept. But functions is, uh, I just can't sh uh, stress how important they are in mathematics, especially if you're studying any math at the level of algebra and beyond. Okay, so here you can see that I have some notation here. This is an example of a function. We would say f of x is equal to x squared. Then we have this associated terminology with functions, domain and range, and then this little thing right here, I'm gonna explain in a second. But before I do that, let me introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over many years I've constructed just a, a huge amount of uh, uh, math courses that are definitely focused on helping anyone from middle school math and beyond. So if you need math help, whether it's a full course or just supplemental kind of tutoring support, uh, go ahead and check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description of this video. Also, if you need a good pair of math notes, you can find a link uh, to various uh, math notes in the description or beneath this video. Okay, so let's get into functions. And the first way I like to explain this is using this little thing here, okay? This is what we call like a function machine, okay? So here, I have an input into this little machine thing, and then I got an output. Now, what are we gonna input into this machine? What we're gonna do is we're going to drop numbers down into it. So let's say I drop the number one into this machine, and when I did that, I got a three that popped out. I'm like, all right, that's cool. So I put in a one into the machine and a three came out. All right, so what happens when I put in, let's say a four? All right, so I'd go to my little machine, I plug it into my function machine, I plug in a four and let's say a seven came out. All right, you kind of see what's going on, right? A function is we plug in, we plug in certain values into the function and certain other values pop out. So what if I plugged in a nine, okay? All right, let's plug in a nine and let's say 15 came out. All right, so hopefully you can kind of get the idea. So you're like, all right, I could just do this all day long. Now, what happens if I came across another one? You're like, hey, you know, we're having a lot of fun with this. So like, you know, I'm telling my friend, Billy, hey, Billy, go bring me some more numbers. We'll throw them into this machine. And Billy goes, hey, I found an another one. Oh, that's cool. Let's throw that one into the machine. What do you think we're, what do you think is going to pop out? Okay. If I found an, another one and I plugged it back into my function, what do you think is going to pop out as my output? Well, the first time I plugged in a one, I got a three. So maybe Billy and I are thinking, well, if I plug in another one back into this machine, I should get another three. But what if this time I plugged in a one and I got like a 13? They're like, ooh, wow, this machine is kind of strange because I could plug in the same value again and I'm get different output values, okay? Well, this is absolutely the essence of what a function is and is not, okay? If your machine, okay, uh, behaves in such a manner where you can plug in the same value again and get different output values. So for example, when I plugged in one, the first time it out, the output value was a three but then I plugged in one the second time and I got a 13. Well, that means that this uh, input value does not go to a unique output value, all right? And that is not a function, okay? Functions are these conceptual machines that um, basically state the following. You can plug in whatever you're gonna plug in, okay? But it can go to only one and one only output value, okay? So this one has to go to either one or 13, okay? So a function, again, let's conceptually kind of uh, write it, is a machine that for every input value, it's going to go to one and only one output value. Every, every input value has one and only one output value. So we can look at this, we can kind of uh, study this in different ways. So let's kind of uh, take a look at it this way. 
So we have input and we have output. Now another way we kind of like to uh, model functions is using this little mapping. So okay, we say we have a one that goes to a three and then our four goes to a seven and maybe nine goes to 15, okay? So in this case, all right, looking here, I could see every input value goes to only one and one output value, right? Again, if I had one and I had an arrow pointing this way, what do you think that's saying? One is trying to go to both three and two seven, all right? So if I showed you this and I said, is this a function, all right? Is this a function? You would be like, hmm, something weird is going on here. One is trying to like go to three and it's trying to go to seven. The answer is no, no, that this is not a function. So if something's not a function, what is it? It's something called a relation, okay? In math, it's, uh, we have something called relations, right? And the world of relations, they're like right here. We have relations. And some relations are functions, okay? Think of it that way. Some relations are functions, and functions have that unique uh, property about them that every input goes to only one output. Now, what about this situation? Okay. What if I had, let's say, this? All right. All right, same question. Okay. Is this a function? All right. Is this a function? All right. So you're like, well, oh, I don't know. Let's think about this. One is going to three. Four is also going to three. Nine is going to 15. So if we look at our machine, okay, it's like we plugged in a one. All right. We three popped out. Then when I plugged in a four, I plugged in a four, three popped out again. Okay. All right. So that's kind of the part that's probably might be confusing you. I'm like, hmm, well, is this a function or not? Well, yes, this is. The answer is yes. All right, this is a function because every input is has only one unique output. There's nothing in the rule book that says that a different input value can't have the same output value. As long as it has only one output value, that's the main idea. Okay, so these are ways that we kind of model functions. Now let's get into this domain and range business. The domain is all the set of numbers in our inputs, okay? This is called the domain of a function. And all the output values is called the range, all right? So we have the domain and range, right? That's what this, uh, that's what those words mean. Now let's go back to our machine, okay? All the numbers that we can put into this function, all the values that we can put into it are called the domain, all right? It refers to the set of values, okay? All the numbers that we're allowed to plug in this machine without breaking it, okay, is the domain, and then all of our output, our respective output values is called the range. Now, we can get into, uh, uh, there could be problems with uh, the domain, okay, which is going to affect the range. Let's take a look at this, okay? So let's say I have this function, f of x equals x plus 1. Now, this is kind of like crazy looking function notation, right? This is our input, okay? And when I do all this math here, this is going to be my output. Let's see how this works, output. So let's say I find f of 2, all right? Well, all this means is replace this x with a 2. That's all that you're doing here. All right, and then we're going to add one. So that was my input. I'm replacing this x with a two. So two plus one is three. All right, so my domain and range, if you will, when I plugged in a two, I got a three, right? No problem. So when I'm looking here, I'm thinking to myself, with this number, can I plug in any number at all and just add one to it? Yeah, there's, there's no number that you can't plug in. I could plug in anything. I could plug in negative a million. Uh, I could plug in any fraction, any decimal, and I'll get an a, uh, output value. There's no problem 
with domain and range. But sometimes there definitely can be a problem, all right? And I'm gonna show you that now, okay? So, and when it comes to domain, we have to be specific about what we are allowed to plug into our little function machine, okay? Because sometimes there are values that we plug in that could break the machine. Let's take a look at something like this, four over X, okay? All right, so what can I plug in here? Well, I could plug in, let's take a look at a number line, all right? Here I have zero, one, two, on and on and on, negative one, negative two, et cetera, et cetera. I could plug in any value here. I could plug in uh, uh, two, okay? So if I found F of two for this function, that'd be four over two or two. Okay, no problem, all right? I could plug in any of these numbers and I'll get an, a, a number. I could plug in any of these numbers and I'll get a number. So all of these numbers could be in the domain, okay? In other words, I can, they're good fuel for my, my machine here, my function machine, all right? They're not gonna harm it, I could plug it all in and with that, I will get some sort of output, some sort of range. However, there's one number that's gonna mess this machine up and that's zero, okay? If I try to go, hmm, what is f of zero? I'm gonna get four over zero, and now this is a problem because this is undefined, right? This is an error. We, we're not allowed to do this in math, okay? So conceptually, you could think of it as like, hey, let's see what happens when we throw a zero into our machine. Guess what's gonna happen? It's gonna blow up, boom, okay? Can't do that can't do that. So zero is not a part of the domain, okay? Zero is not a part of the domain. So this domain, okay, we could describe it as all numbers except for zero. So very often there are restrictions on the domain, which of course is going to affect the uh, respective output values, which is the range, okay? Now I could take this video, this concept, you know, into just various levels, right? Like, um, you know, I can make it more advanced. We can kind of really get into more and more problems. You definitely want to, um, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to wrap up this video now because this is more of an introduction to the concept of functions and relations, right? Uh, but if you want to know more about functions, which you shouldn't want to know more, okay? I already have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel. So I've, I've done a lot of stuff on functions. So you can check that stuff out. But if you really need formal, full instruction on function composition, you know, uh, inverse functions, piecewise functions, recursive functions, yada, yada, there's tons of them. All right, complete, full, demonstrated problems, lessons and stuff. And you definitely want to check out my math help program. And of course, my notes can help you out as well. But hopefully this cleared up uh, the concept of functions for you, at least to the, the big picture stuff, right? You got to get the big picture stuff down before we can drill down into, um, you know, the more technical aspects of functions. But you got to understand this stuff. If you're messing around with anything algebra and beyond, you got to master functions. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.